Hi everybody, today I'm going to do what I eat in a day on high fat carnivore. I'm Anita from ketogenicwoman.com where I share keto and carnivore recipes and other cooking ideas that have helped me to lose over 130 pounds and still counting. Uh, if you are new here, welcome to my channel. I hope you check out some of my other videos and for those of you that are returning, welcome back. I hope you like today's video. Okay, hi, it is morning time. I'm gonna walk you through all my meals today. Um, I don't snack generally, um, so you won't see any of that. In fact, I didn't even have a butter coffee this morning. I'm, I haven't eaten yet, it's uh, quarter to nine. So um, I, I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna have for breakfast as well as what I'm making for later in here. Um, but let's address uh, one question that I'm, I'm getting about my eating timing and all that. A lot of people do ask me if I'm, if I'm doing intermittent fasting. Um, uh, not on purpose, like I'm not doing any intentional time on my eating. Um, I do, st I eat my dinner fairly early. I try to eat it somewhere between four and five. If it gets to after five, that is highly unusual for me and it's only because there's external factors. But somewhere between four and five o'clock, I eat my last meal of the day. I don't snack in the evening, but I do have a tablespoon of butter before bed. Um, so, you know, whether, I know some people would say, oh, well, then, you know, you've broken your fast or whatever. That's okay, because I'm not intentionally fasting. So I have that tablespoon of butter. So yesterday, I believe my last meal was about 4.30. It's now almost nine. So I don't know if I can even do that math in my head, um, depending on if you count the tablespoon of butter or not. Um, I mean, it's, it's looking to me like about uh, um, 16 hours, I think. Um, which may or may not count as intermittent fasting because of that tablespoon of butter, but uh, you know, like I said, uh, I'm, I'm eating when I'm hungry and I'm getting hungry. So what am I gonna have for my first meal? Um, leftovers. Going to have some leftover lamb. This is a bit of leftover, whoops, I'm getting stuff on the table. This is a bit of leftover lamb chop from my dinner last night. And I'm going to, there's a bone in there. I'm, I'm going to weigh that so that I, I, cause I have no idea how much that is there. I've got some egg yolks here. A Couple of them are broken, but I tend to make 12 egg yolks, put them in here and then I use them up during the week. And with my egg yolks, I have to have the breakfast gravy of choice, which is hollandaise sauce. So uh, I'm going to put this all together right now. So, I mean, I love doing this because I lead a fairly busy life. And if I can just go in the fridge and put this all together, I am happy about that. So, oh, there's a big bone. So not quite sure how much of this is gonna come off. This may end up only being about two ounces. Okay, I'm not gonna fight with that anymore. Let's see what we have here. 1.8 ounces. So I am just going to put that aside. And uh, actually, yeah, I'll just heat it up in here in this bowl. And, oh, I wanna heat up, actually, I'm gonna get a new plate. Cause I want to put, I'm going to have more egg yolks than I had planned because I thought this might have been three ounces. I'm just gonna cut this up into smaller pieces. Now my plan is I'm just going to microwave this. Um, and, and I do get a lot of comments from people, oh, you shouldn't microwave then don't, um, you know, I'm gonna do it. Let me see if I can get an extra egg yolk out of here without breaking another one. Okay, so I've got three yolks here. And put that, oops, put that aside. I think I'm gonna go, since I didn't have any butter yet today, I'm going to go with two tablespoons of hollandaise sauce. I will link 
below the um, the hollandaise sauce. Uh, I made it like an eggs Benny type video. I think it's on my website too now. I'm I try to keep up with my website, putting these recipes on there. I know a lot of people will see me make a recipe and then tell me they couldn't find it. Um, it's, it's because it takes, you know, it takes effort. Um, and I'm trying to, trying to do it, but uh, there's always a lag. So sorry about, sorry about that. I'm doing my best. I need, I need to, to clone, clone myself sometimes. sometimes. So I'll provide the macros to this meal because at this point in my brain, I don't know what they are, but I think I've got enough fat here to make this 80-20. We'll see when I come back with it. But all I'm going to do now, and just so I don't splatter my microwave, make sure you stab your egg yolks. The other day I got an egg yolk all over the microwave. So I'm going to put this in for 30, well, I'll show you what it is first. <laughs> I'm going to put this in for 30 seconds. Okay, here you go. So the uh, sauce melted nicely all over everything. And uh, this is a divine breakfast. It's one of my favorites, any type of leftover meat with a couple of egg yolks and the sauce and oh, I'm in heaven. So. Hope you give something like this a try, your meat of choice. Now, before I leave you and eat that, I wanna tell you what I'm going to do for another meal later. I'm going to make some bone broth. So uh, here's my, my pot of bones. I'm doing it in the Instant Pot. Um, so let me tell you what I've got in here. All of these bones are leftovers, I guess. They've all been roasted. So I have a, they're all beef. I have some bones that were roasted to get the beef marrow out, but there's still lots of stuff on them. I have some beef rib bones. I don't know how much will come out of that, but I thought I'd, you know, use them. And then I have the best part is oxtail. These are leftover oxtail bones and they're, they still have like bits of, like this is gonna be a very gelatinous broth from those oxtails. So I, you know, I don't know exactly, like I make this different every time. It depends on what I have. I do have a link below to my site where I go over how to make uh, bone broth in the Instant Pot, in a pot on the stove and the slow cooker. Uh, I make it the same every time. I know other people use vegetable scraps and this and that and the other thing. I do not. I only do this. I have, I have my pot of bones. And I use a tablespoon of Redmond salt. Let's see. Well, that's half a tablespoon. That's okay, I'll add more. I have my, I knew I was gonna run out, so I have my bag of Redmond's here. And I use a tablespoon of apple cider vinegar. Um, they say, I can't remember who they is, but they say that apple cider vinegar, if you use that, it uh, draws out more minerals and collagen. I don't know if it's true, but I figure it can't hurt. And then, I just top it with water. Like I, I go up to where the max line is on the Instant Pot. So you don't want to have your bones overflowing. You want to have only enough bones in there that you can go up to the uh, line with your water. So then I'm going to do that, fill it up with water to the line. It'll go in the Instant Pot on manual for 20 minutes. Not 20 minutes. Two hours. <laughs> it will go in the Instant Pot on manual for two hours, natural release, and then I'm going to have some wonderful broth, some of which I will use for my dinner meal tonight, which is going to be an Asian type soup. So, um, you know, at some point today, you will see this show up again. We'll see you in the next segment. I need to go eat my breakfast before it gets cold. Hey everyone, I'm back for my second meal uh, and I'm kind of excited about this one because uh, look what I have here. I have a whole box of carnivore crisps. 
I am going to be going on two road trips. So these are going to come in very handy. So Carnivore Crisps did reach out to me and asked me if I wanted to try them. And uh, as you guys probably know, I do make my own. I have a meat slicer and I have a dehydrator, but I wouldn't be making my own to go on these. I've got two road trips coming up. And I also remember what it's like to be a working full-time mom at that time with four teenagers in the house. At that time, I did not have a dehydrator. I did not have a meat slicer. I did not have the time to make my own carnivore crisps. So I see, you know, where this is valuable, uh, you know, especially, especially for that, uh, that time when you need the convenience. So I asked them about the uh, shelf life um, because as I said, I am going to be traveling. And they said that uh, one to two weeks in the fridge. So, uh, but that's going to be great because there's there's small bags and I mean I can't believe how many they sent me. This is going to be awesome. Uh, there's these big bags uh, and these small bags. Now these small bags, if that's all I was eating for the meal, that's pro I'd probably have this for a meal and some butter. Um, so, you know, something to keep in mind, it all depends on what you're having it with, but I mean, there is, there's pork loin, beef heart, beef brisket. I can hardly wait to try that one. Uh, there's beef liver, there's uh, chicken skins, chicken breasts, uh, elk, bison. Now I wanted to try, I'm gonna have the bison for lunch. So the other thing that I do like about these is there's, you know, uh, bison, purified water, Redmond's real salt. Um, when I make my own, I use Redmond salt and the thinly sliced um, meat, whatever that is. So I have, uh, oh, let me just tell you. So this one here is an example. They're all different. So check the labels on the back to find out the macros. I scanned this one uh, with the micronometer app on the phone and to, you know, to get it into my lunch for today. And if I eat half this bag, I need two tablespoons butter to make it 80-20 for those of you who are doing the high fat carnivore. So if I end up eating the whole bag, I probably, that'll be four tablespoons of butter. So I just wanna see what it looks like because I, I don't know if I need the whole bag right now or not. Um, we'll see. Oh, um, the other thing is they gave me a link so that you guys could have a discount. If any of you would like to order it, I'm going to include that link below. And thank you so much for your support of my channel. So let's see how this looks. Kind of looks like uh, bison bacon or something. Yeah, I could easily eat this for a meal. Um, I'm sure Teddy will help me, Pippi. So, hmm. Mm. Oh, that little bite. Okay, let me try. Let me try without butter. Mm. Just what you want, crunchy and salty. I'm going to try some with butter. I feel like I'm putting butter on bacon right now. This looks so good. Mm. Mm -hmm. That definitely gets two thumbs up. So I am going to put the rest of my butter on these pieces and I am then gonna go and enjoy my lunch. It might take me a while to eat all this. I'm not, I'm not really sure. Um, so I will, I will see how I go and report back later. Um, my bone broth that I made just before we uh, left last time is now ready. Uh, and I'm, it's just in the natural release right now. <clears throat> so I, uh, when we come back later, it'll be time to make my Asian soup and I'll show you how that comes together. So we'll see you guys in the next segment. I'm, I'm off to eat my carnivore crisps. Mm. Mm. Hey everybody, I'm back for dinner. Uh, it's about 20 after four and I like to eat between four and five. So, um, but first I wanted to 
finish off the conversation about bone broth. So I finished boiling my bones or actually instant potting my bone, pressure cooking my bones. And um, so what I do when that's all done is I strain it. I just have one of these uh, sifts, I guess, that's a fine sift. I strain everything, uh, put it into jars. So I've got these three jars here and uh, you can already see the fat is uh, you know lifting to the top these will go overnight in the fridge and so will this one um, and then what i'll do with the bone broth that's in here is uh, tomorrow i'll take the fat off and then i will um, take the what i hope will be gelled broth at the you know underneath the fat and I'll scoop that into little molds like um, like the silicone molds uh, freeze that and then pop them out of the molds and put them in a bag and and that way uh, you know how sometimes you need like just a little tiny bit of broth for a recipe or something like that those are perfect for that Whereas this would be perfect for if I was making some stew, I could use this, um, throw it in with some stew, meat, whatever I'm stewing. Um, so yeah, it's nice to have big quantities as well as small little quantities. So I'm gonna get this out of the way because I want to make my dinner, um, which I, ha I am using some of the broth for. So uh, let me just get this out of the way. Okay, so what am I gonna have for dinner? I'm making some soup, and like I said before, it's kind of an Asian style. It's not tr a true Asian soup, because that would be something uh, a lot more, a lot, you know, a lot more involved, a lot more uh, special seasonings and spices. In fact, if you want a good Asian broth that is keto, I suggest you go over to Keto Asian Flavors and check out her her, her pho. It is amazing the detail she put into that video to make this. All I'm doing is using bone broth. Um, in my soup is going to be some pork meatballs that I made and it is literally just pork. Just rolled them into little balls. I added a couple of teaspoons of oyster sauce to the pork to just give them a, a little bit of Asian flavor. I've got some shrimp, one ounce of shrimp. Uh, I think this is two ounces of pork. And I've got some noodles. These are tripe noodles that I made uh, the other day when I was you know, playing around with the tripe again. I am going to uh, add some of my broth over top. And I'm going to put in a little of this gluten-free, soy-free soy sauce. I like this a lot. It's naked and saucy. It's not carnivore. It's made from a plant because it comes from coconut. Organic fermented coconut sap. Sea salt. Those are the only two ingredients and I use one, I drizzle one teaspoon on top just to give it the slightest Asian flair. This is about as, as, as wild as I can go with this stuff because Anything else, it seems like, uh, you know, anything else seasoning and spice wise for me, uh, I'm, you know, suffering all night long. And so, uh, you know, there's just these little tiny things I can do to give a hint of flavor. Um, and it makes for a nice change from a steak. So I've got my broth heating there on the stove. I'm just going to warm this up in the microwave for about 30 seconds just to warm everything up and I'll be right back. Okay, I'm just going to grab my broth. You can, if you're, if you have a Asian market near you, you can also get some hot pot meat. They have, you know, super paper thin sliced like ribeye strips and, and things like that. You can put some meat on here. The hot broth will practically cook it because it's so thin. So I'm just gonna, going to pour this on top. I'm going to feel like I've been at my favorite Asian restaurant. And uh, you know, if you're keto, you know, some green onions and a few other garnishes and uh, this will be a nice change. 
There we go. I don't even really need a, a teaspoon. Probably half a teaspoon would be just fine. Give it uh, an authentic look. And there you go. My Asian style soup. Now, there's no, well, other than in the bone broth, there is some fat in there because I didn't let this uh, rise to the top and all that. I just used the broth. There is a little bit of fat in there, but it's not going to be enough for high fat carnivore. The shrimp is lean. There's some in the uh, meatballs, of course. Um, so I am going to have a side of two tallow bites. This is half butter, half tallow. And I kind of like that combination. And uh, this is my dinner. So there you go. Let me, uh, I'm not gonna try to use chopsticks on camera, but let me try my, my uh, meatballs here. Mmm, delicious. There's nothing like a good hot soup. Uh, we're having a cold spell coming. It's going to be below freezing for the next few days. So, yeah, I'm going to go in and enjoy my soup and my, uh, my tallow bites there. Thank you so much for watching. I'll put all the relevant links below that you can follow so that you can find, you know, the bone broth if, if you'd like to follow how I do it. Um, and whatever else I talked about today where I, oh yes, how to prepare the tripe for recipes, those sorts of things. I'm going to see you on the next video. Thanks again. Take care. I'm Anita from Ketogenic Woman. Wait, dot com. I'm Anita from KetogenicWoman. Sorry, yeah, I said laugh, sorry. You're not gonna f in, are you? <laughs> <laughs> I lost myself there. I can't.